This cool song is John Fahey's Steamboat Going Round the Bend. And it was uh, first released on his album of Rivers and Religion in 1972, but he played it live a lot. He had a guitar just like this, a Kona lap steel guitar built in the 1920s. And uh, I'm really fortunate to have one just like it um, that I picked up many, like 40 years ago, um, because I saw him with one. And this is one of the songs that just always stood out to me as one of the coolest things ever. And, you know, I'm playing this with a, with a, a bullet bar. There are also, I don't have my other slide here, steel here, but there's, there are other types that are a little bit easier to use than this. Um, but, uh, yeah, and you could also do this on a standard guitar on your lap. Just tune it to open G, D, G, D, G, B, D, and use even a bottleneck you can use just on your standard guitar sitting on your lap. Um, and, and it'll sound great. Now, the advantage to this guitar is the action is very high, so the strings cannot touch the frets. The frets are even there, just they're sort of just decorative, but they're real frets on, on these Konas, which are related to Weisenborns. They were built by the same, same factory, basically, in Los Angeles, um, in starting around 1915 up until the early 30s, I think. And, um, but they just have great sound, and it's the, it's the early days of Hawaiian lap steel guitar. So there are other songs out there. I'll save that for another day. But um, this, this tune of Fahey's is just a real typical blues-type progressions that then with some, some cool licks in there. So the, the important things about playing with a steel like this are getting used to vibrato so that the notes, it helps keep them in tune a little bit more by shaking them around. If you, it's real easy to play out a tune. Like right here, if I play, if I go into this chord at the 12th fret, well, if I'm a little off and I come down here, it's like, oh man. So accurate placement of the, of the steel is really important. And it makes it very difficult to look at music and follow and pay attention to what's going on here. But you do have to rely on your ear to keep these in tune. So getting used to playing with a steel or a bottleneck if you're doing this and finding your way to be right on top of the frets. Now sometimes what you do, what you have to do with the steel here is tip it up so that you're only playing two or maybe three strings. And then I've got a bass note that I could play open. Then it's especially important to be at the right place. If I'm a little off, oh, that hurts. So, gotta, gotta make sure to be right on top. Um, you're all, the other thing that makes it, that's gonna happen in this song, that makes it difficult to do with a bottleneck, is there are times when I play notes on the lower strings, but keep the first string open. So we also wanna get used to sliding into notes and away from notes. Sometimes, not just doing So we want to get the, those types of effects in there. So all of this are, you know, kind of uh, techniques required for playing lap steel. So I'm not going to go a whole lot into them as a whole instructional course, but as, as the, through the course of talking about the song, we will get into that. There are basically three sections to the song. The, um, let me get a, dig up the second section here, just to give you an idea of what it's doing, except don't put the pages in the wrong order. Let's see here. Um, but we're going to talk about some, some of the variations that happen. Now, so section two has a similar chord progression, but, and a similar melody. Down to our C chord. Back up, though, to the high G. Back to our C chord. This time up to an E flat chord. Then a little bit of time wasting. To our D chord, back to the D, you can almost do anything here, and then our little closing lick again. So that's what section B sounds like. Section C has a slightly different progression. So 
those three measures of our G chord. Two this time to the D. So that's pretty much it. We have three sections that just have slight little variations in them. But as this lesson goes on, I'm going to talk about um, some of the differences he does between live versions that appeared later, usually about 10 years later in the early 80s, he was playing this a lot. And um, we'll talk about some of the... The easiest way to play this is with a steady bass the whole time. With the bass being muted with the palm of the hand, you even could do this with, as he does, picks. So you can get a little deader, little heavier, bassier sound if you were to use a thumb pick for this. Now John plays with two finger picks and a thumb pick. Well, there's the thumb pick as I take it off. Um, but I'm going to do this all with just fingers because I have nails that work just as well. So uh, I think that's all I had to tell you about the preliminary stuff. First, what I'm going to do is break down. I have two different tabs to this. One is as note for note as I could get the studio version. I mean, as I could figure out from listening. And then, um, and then I have one that is a culmination of some of the different things he did live when he played it. So I really encourage you to, to check out some of his videos playing it in the first place because they're just really fun to watch. I found three or four that he played where he's playing this, one in the kitchen in Santa Monica, um, one in a studio, and, um, on a, and then there was the TV show one. Anyway, the, so there's, there's some great, great, great versions of this out there. Anyway. There you have it. Uh, let's dig in. The first couple of segments, we'll talk about the studio version, and then we'll take a look at the at some of the live variations. And I hope you have as much fun working on this as I have had. <laughs> 